Okay, I think we are ready to start. So thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Um, I'm gonna start by passing um, it off to NDP MP Nikki Ashton, who is joined this morning by Chief David Monias and Councillor Shirley Robinson. After they speak, we are gonna take questions from the media. So to ask a question, um, please use the raise hand function, or you can send me a private message in the chat. And just for all members of the media to know, this is being recorded. Um, if you would like a copy, I'll put my uh, email address in the chat and you can send me an email and I will follow up with the recording um, afterwards. Okay, so Nikki, go ahead. Thank you so much, Charlotte. And I'm honored today to be joined by Chief David Monias of the Pimichikamak Cree Nation and Councillor Shirley Robinson of Pimichikamak Cree Nation. I am joining you today from Treaty 5 territory, the tr traditional territory of Mississauga Cree Nation in my home in Thompson. Thank you for joining us. This week has been like no other in recent history in our country. The discovery of the 215 children found in a mass grave on the grounds of the Kamloops Residential School has shocked our nation. First Nations across our region have been reliving pain, trauma, uh, sadness, and anger. Sur residential school survivors, their children, their grandchildren, people that I've heard from have been going through unimaginable, unimaginable moments these last few days. But what I have cl heard clearly time and time again in these last few days is the absolute need for action. Survivors have made this clear. Their children and grandchildren have made this clear. First Nations have made this clear. There were residential schools in our constituency. There was one in Pimichikamak Cree Nation, Cross Lake, one, uh, two imposed on Norway House Cree Nation, one on the territory of Apasquia Cree Nation, and one imposed on Saiging uh, First Nation as well. All of these First Nations have been grappling on how to move forward from this tragedy and have been clear that they want to bring their children home. Pimichekamak Cree Nation has been leading the way in making a call as early as Monday of this week directly to the Prime Minister seeking support, funding, uh, financial support to ensure that a proper extensive search of the grounds of the residential school brutally imposed on them for decades happens. They've also made clear that this must include identification and repatriation. We've heard many make it clear that these searches must happen. But the response from the federal government has been problematic. First of all, on Wednesday, we all of a sudden heard about money that was first announced in 2019 uh, that they commit, they are saying now will be spent and spent, uh, uh, you know, uh, made available to communities that would like to access it. This cannot be done on an ad hoc basis. I want to echo the words of Justice Murray Sinclair and others, a married to a Pellafond, who have made it clear uh, that there ought to be independent committees set up, that there needs to be oversight, that there needs to be coordination, that we need to make sure that we are also treating these scenes as possible and probable crime scenes. And that's why the second call today is for the federal government to bring in international experts in this work. One organization is the foremost international expert on this front, and that is the International Commission of Missing Persons, an organization based in The Hague, an international in, intergovernmental organization whose expertise is in uncovering mass graves and genocide around the world, particularly in war zones. This situation is no different. We need to make sure that international experts are involved and able to work with First Nations like Pima Chikamak and others to make sure that the work that is done is done at the uh, highest level with all of the respect uh, and, and expertise that it requires. And again, with the full recognition that we are talking about possible and probable crime scenes. The call today is an urgent one. The call today is made by a First Nation that took a stand early on this week uh, to make this, uh, this call clear. It is a call that I believe is shared by many First Nations. We've seen this, we're hearing from more First Nations. What we need to see today is Canada act 
for Pimichikamak Cree Nation, for First Nations, uh, and do better when it comes to not just funding their, 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 uh, the searches that they hope uh, to conduct, but also ensuring that there are international expertise involved, that there is coordination, independent uh, uh, oversight of this work. And so I'm honored to be joining uh, uh, Chief Monias and Councillor Robinson today in, in supporting their clear calls for federal action on this front. And let me again reiterate the call that so many have made. This is about uncovering the truth of residential schools, residential schools that were and are part of Canada's genocide against Indigenous people. And without that truth, there can be no reconciliation. I'd like now to pass it on to Chief Monias. Thank you, Nikki. Appreciate uh, you hosting this press conference and inviting us to be a party to, uh, to sound out the message that we, uh, we need some answers. Uh, before I go on, I'm gonna give a little history as to why we are here, why this is important to Pemichigamak. I have with me my counselor, um, Serda Robinson. She's just gonna go a little bit on the history it's not going to be long, but uh, we'll try to summarize as much as possible to keep uh, uh, you guys from uh, keeping you too long. So I'll introduce uh, my counselor. Go ahead. Good morning, everybody. I'm Councillor Shirley Robinson. I've been serving my people for almost 15 years in uh, Pemichigamak Cree uh, Nation. I am. Um, I just want to give you a brief history. I, I, have, I have had the opportunity to listen and, uh, and uh, try and understand what happened back in the days of the residential school. I have uh, heard many stories of our elders, our women, our carriers of life, how horrific the stories were. I've had the privilege to work with these residential school survivors when uh, it first surfaced. And uh, I listened to their stories, many of them emotional many times, uncovering what was affecting their lives. It was very, uh, heart-wrenching, taking in these stories from these survivors. When the Aboriginal Healing Foundation first brought, brought out the funding to work with residential school survivors in, uh, through healing and wellness, this is where I had to do my research. And it was very difficult listening to these stories I carried these stories for, uh, from these children that were in those residential schools who were now elders. A lot of them have gone out already into the spirit world that couldn't, can no longer speak and share their stories. When the news came out of the 215 children found in a mass grave in Kamloops. That pain for me resurfaced. The stories that I carried all these years resurfaced. And these, and these children that were mentioned in Kamloops gave me that courage to stand up for our people the residential school survivors who are no longer with us and those that remain and those that are not found yet unaccounted for. I wanted to stand up for them, to advocate and speak for them. And this is something that I wanna pursue myself because we've had two residential schools imposed in our territory. 
One burnt down in 1930. And soon another one was rebuilt and filled up so fast. And to hear the stories of my elders, how tragic it was for them in there. And, and this is something that uh, was very vital to take, a to take a that stand for. We pursued with honoring these children with a vigil in Pimichikama territory. We held a vigil right where the residential school stood. There was children there, men, women, elders, residential school survivors reliving the trauma that was imposed upon them. We lit a sacred fire for these children and the survivors that remain and the ones that have gone. We wanna honor them and we respect them. And, it, and, and this is why we have to bring our loved ones home. We want them home now. So this is a brief history of what we want and the action we want and demand now. We cannot stop here. We have to move forward. We have to continue. This pain, the, the pain we're reliving is very detrimental. Both my parents are residential school survivors and they're no longer with me. They're both gone to the spirit world and, and they, they're not here to tell their story, but I'm here to tell the story for all of them. So thank you, Nikki and everyone else. Thank you, uh, Councillor. <clears throat> I think one of the things is that we had written a letter back in, uh, on Monday uh, expressing our outrage in terms of uh, the remains being found in Kamloops as this has uh, a national impact and in fact an international impact on many Indigenous people who feel and share the grief that we all felt when we heard of the 215 remains being found. It is, it is a disgrace to hear that such a thing can happen in Canada. Yet it's one of the best kept secrets. It's the best kept secrets that Canada has and does not want to share with the rest of the world. Somebody has to tell this story you know, Bimitsigamak, uh, I am chief of the nation for Bimitsigamak. My name is David Munias. And I re represent our nation as a chief of the nation. And that is why we decided that we wanted to reach out to the International Commission and, uh, of, mis um, of Missing Persons, as they had in the past worked with Canada in looking, searching for mass graves. We want something similar to happen across Canada because this is only the beginning of the search. And we had slowly start, started to look elsewhere where our children were. And we have found some graves, unmarked graves where our people were. We had funded family groups that went and searched the uh, was there as they found their uh, their family members where they were buried. So it was a it was a, it was good for them to find the remains and for them to find the grave, but it's still not finished because they have not been able to repatriate the bodies back into our nation because of COVID. 
And we hope that we can start moving towards doing more searches. And these searches must be organized and undertaken sooner than later. You know, the discovery in Camelot has opened a lot of wounds. It re-traumatized a lot of people, as Sir has stated. You know, we want the truth. You cannot keep it uh, secret anymore. You know, our communities, we want to bring our children home, put them to rest properly, proper ceremonies to be done, proper ceremonies to be done, must be done. That's why we have the sacred fire, as uh, Councilor Shirley Robinson uh, stated. The federal government must pay for the searches, identification and repatriation of these children who would now have been our grandparents. And that's why we said Canada must fight experts, such as the International Commission on Missing Persons, ICMP. They're experts in ungoverned mass graves and genocide, documenting genocide. And this work cannot be done on a ad hoc basis. This was actually one of the things that the, the Truth and Reconciliation Commissioners asked to do and were denied. They were not given that full mandate to do such a thing. Because they were hoping still to hide the truth. So it's not a full truth commission. It's, 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 it's actually very sad on an annual basis that Canada continues to report to the international community of the United Nations how they treat their indigenous people. And, and it's a good picture that they paint, but it's not a positive experience from our end. You know, while we hope to work with ICMP directly, they must be engaged at the national level. We want to do our stuff at the community level. We want to take the lead in our community level. We want the, the funding and the resources to do it. And we're not waiting for the bureaucracy to open up a receipt notification that there's a process that we have to go through to access funds. Another bureaucracy to stall the work that needs to be done. It's not good enough to, to, to say, yeah, we will fund you. I have had many, many notifications of funding initiatives. I had conversations with ministers and a conversation with the prime minister where he promised that he was gonna work with us to make things work as we know better as a community, as a nation, what we want. And they would resource us. That not, has not happened. He has not lived up to his word to say, yes, this is what I promised you on video. It's recorded. This is what you guys need. As I stated, you guys know what you need and I will fund it. Ottawa does not know what it's doing, he says. So we must work together to get things done. I haven't heard from him again. You know, when you have a conversation with somebody and you have communication, correspondence, it must be reciprocated to show respect so respect to the treaties that you have entered, that you have with the nations. This is what the handshake is about, trust. To make sure we have good working relations, a cool habitation of living together in this land. That was the promises that were made. You didn't, we didn't say that to and kill our children. These are mur murdered and missing children that are found. If you found another grave with a non-indigenous person found there, you will have the RCMP cordoned off that area. You will have forensic teams in that area immediately. So they're not contaminated. And they will search for evidence on who killed those children or why those children are there. Why is it different when it comes to indigenous people? Why is it okay to, to, to kill our people? 
Okay, I'm sorry. I guess it's okay because it's genocide and that's accepted. But it's not acceptable to us. These things must be addressed right away. We need conversations. We need communications. You need to reciprocate the communication. That's been started a long time ago. Work on the relationship to bring healing to our people. Sometimes I'm at a loss of words because I want to work with the government. I want to believe that they're doing going to be doing good. I want to believe that the people have good hearts and that we will make it work. We will have answers. I would want to believe that there must be truth for there, for there to be reconciliation. But only if we are truthful and we are true to our actions by leading our actions and working with us, could there be really, true, really a true concil reconciliation. And now I'm starting to think, was there ever, ever, ever even a conciliation? We hope that there was by the setting of the treaties. Now we're talking about reconciliation. But every time we uncover something, you know, why must we uncover something for actions to be taken? This should have been funded a long time ago when the truth and reconciliation work was being done. They asked for that mandate to do this. The government back then said no. So they didn't give that, that mandate. With this press conference, it's not how I want to do the work. It's not how I want to negotiate. I want to do it in a meaningful way by sitting down. We have a minority government, bring all the other parties to the table, meet with us, discuss this with us. No, people have to hide behind things, right? They have to hide behind the lies that they believe. And we have different responses by different people. Even premiers saying such stupid things. I'm sorry to say, that's ignorance. I know we cannot ever erase history. But we do not have to memorialize the hurt, the abusers. That's not reconciliation. Our people are hurt. We talk, we talk about sacred ceremonies. We talk about sacred fires. We held fitzels, praying, hoping that we can do something to make it better for our people. But it's hard when you can't have that trust. I had trust on the government. I was hoping that there's good people in there with good hearts that they will do the right thing. But when you, when it's a one-way conversation, you don't hear from them. It's hard to, to start the trust. I asked for women's shelters. We didn't get it. There's a lot of trauma that, 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 that's precipitated by this trauma from a residential school. We want to do things to address those traumas. But we're not supported. We have overcrowding in our community. We're not supported. You don't get the housing. You don't even hear from them. I'm sorry, I, I, I sound mad, but it's not mad, being mad and upset. It's frustration. 
Frustration for the lack of answers and lack of communication and lack of partnership to do these things. And again, they'll say, here's a little bit of money to a scrap of money that our First Nations, it's over 600 First Nations across Canada. Once you get your piece of the pie, 27 million, what is that worth? What are you gonna buy? What are you gonna be able to do? You got companies like Air Canada, getting millions and millions of for of uh, incentives and bonuses. They don't mind spending it on individual persons that are that are helping them. You have companies like Hydro who make over millions of dollars on their salaries. But they're scared to give you eight hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars for a nation of with a population of one thousand ten thousand people. They can justify paying for those individuals, but they cannot justify it for the wrongs that they've done. I'm not saying that money is going to take care of everything, because it's not money's not always the answer. But it sure helps a little bit to help us get along the way to start moving towards. Finding out what's happening, finding the truth. But don't put priorities in front of it. Don't cap it. A life is priceless, a child's life is priceless. And if it's destroyed, you want it's up to you to find out why it's done and who did it. And somebody must be held accountable. Thank you for listening to me. I know I'm taking a lot of time here. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief Monias. Thank you for, for sharing those strong messages and that uh, that that uh, emotion as well, which uh, uh, is, is so powerful. I um, uh, <clears throat> Recognizing the time, I, I do want to uh, see perhaps uh, uh, Councillor Robinson if you have anything to add, and then we can open it up to questions. I just want to add that um, it, it's um, it's been very difficult. It's uh, been very sad, and uh, it's very important as. As the chief said, that we have to bring our children home. We have to bring our loved ones home. I am a mother. I am a grandmother. I am also a survivor of the day schools. And the impacts it has had on all of us still remains today. It's still happening out there. And this has to stop. Somebody is accountable for all of this. And as a mother, a grandmother, I want justice for this, for our children, for the ones that never made it home and for the ones that we wanna bring home. I've, I have so many stories that I carry in my heart, as I stated earlier. These stories resurfaced for me. And it's important that they be brought out so that we can achieve what we want to achieve for these children and the mothers that never got a chance to hold their children, the mothers that never got to hug their children. These children deserved all the love 
that any child needs every day. So that's what I wanted to add. We have to do this now. It has to, we cannot stop. This is genocide. Thank you, I will stop there. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. Charlotte, I can pass it back to you. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. So we're now gonna open up to questions from the media. Um, if you would like to ask a question, could you please use the raise hand function? You could also send me a private message in the chat if that is easier for you. Okay, so we're gonna start with um, Josh Aldrich. Just a reminder that you get one question and one follow-up. And if you wouldn't mind just identifying um, your publication um, before you start with your question, thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Josh Aldridge. I'm with Winnipeg Sun. Uh, thank you for, for sharing your stories. Uh, very powerful. Uh, you, uh, you, you've listed off a few different residential schools in your area over the last, uh, well, that you at the beginning of this uh, press conference and throughout. Are you confident that those are the only residential schools in the area? Uh, Winnipeg recently uh, or there's been a movement in uh, Winnipeg to uh, shine more light on some other residential schools that are not listed by the Truth and Reconcil Reconciliation Commission. Uh, and there are all sorts of buildings that uh, burned down where records were scarce. So are you confident that the, uh, the residential schools you listed earlier are the only ones that were in the area or are there potentially others uh, that should also be uncovered and searched as well? Sure, I'll, I'll take that question. I uh, we should absolutely be uh, uh, considering, um, you know, any and all uh, potential sites uh, where Indigenous children uh, would have been uh, buried, uh, children that were 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 murdered, were killed, uh, died as a result of culpable uh, neglect. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, we, we obviously have the Truth and Reconciliation Commission uh, records and, and uh, uh, categorizations, uh, but, uh, but we should absolutely be open uh, and, and consider other, uh, whether it's educational institutions, health institutions, uh, and, uh, and other sites. I do want to acknowledge as well that, for example, there was a sanatorium on uh, the territory of the Apasquia Cree Nation, where families in the past have tried to find their, their loved ones in, in, uh, uh, in unmarked uh, uh, um, uh, circumstances. And so, uh, you know, this is only the beginning. I think that's the message we've also heard from Chief Monias and Councillor Robinson. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the time to uncover this truth, what the Canadian state did and what it sanctioned uh, that, uh, uh, that, con that contributed and was directly implicated in the death uh, and, and killing of Indigenous children. Thank you. And I don't like to assume when I read the story. So uh, we, we've heard all sorts of uh, stories in the last week or so about uh, classmates just going missing uh, or grave sites just marked with the white cross. And this came up during Brandon uh, when they uncovered uh, the mass graves there. Uh, have you guys heard similar stories where where classmates would just kind of go missing. What, they're there one day and then they're gone the next or uh, people have the vague memory of walking through some of these unmarked graves and that have been lost to history. It, 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 is this part of the story uh, that uh, you guys are hearing up there as well? Uh, or is just all the other horrors that you're hearing coming out of, uh, out of the residential schools that you have heard? I would say that, uh, that there are other mass graves, there are other grave sites and uh, the opposite of truth is a lie and if you find something you don't want to be uncovered you're not going to mark it and you're not going to expose it and so forth there are still other residential schools that are not be considered residential schools and do not qualify for for compensation under the, res under the residential schools 
besides this, they, did, they determined what was a residential school. We don't. We, we say we, were, we went to school where we were sent out. And like uh, uh, Nikki has stated, there's, uh, there's sanatoriums, there's residential schools, there's schools people were sent out. There's hospitals where people were sent out. And they all say the same thing, that there was abuse. There was experimentation on our people. And there were people that died. And people, our people were not notified about those things. Where these people are buried, we don't know. And when we find out something that, that there's a, a, maybe a grave, then it's covered up. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. So the next question is going to Christy Kirkup at the Globe and Mail. Go ahead, Christy. Having trouble hearing you, Christy. I think you're unmuted, but um, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I can't hear you. No, we can't either. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next person. Christy, um, you can also just send me your message in the chat and I can ask that next. So um, we'll move on to Patrick Foucault. Patrick, go ahead. Hi, um, can you hear me well? Yes, perfect. Thank you so much uh, for the, to the both of us uh, for sharing your stories. Uh, we, we also want to share those stories on the French side of CBC Radio Canada. And I would just want wanted to ask uh, Madame Ashton if you could uh, please give us a statement in, in French on what's, your, what's the call for today. Mm. Merci. Oui, absolument. Uh, je suis ici avec uh, uh, la Première Nation Pimichikamak, Cree Nation, uh, ici au nord du Manitoba, et j'appuie le rappel au premier ministre, au gouvernement fédéral, à ce qu'il uh, 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 appuie uh, de façon financière uh, les, uh, uh, les cherches des, des, uh, uh, du terrain où se trouvait uh, le, le pensionnat uh, uh, imposé sur les, leur territoire. Uh, deuxièmement, le rappel aujourd'hui, c'est un appel pour que le Canada invite un organisme intergouvernemental uh, qui, est, qui est expert uh, dans uh, le, uh, la découverte de, du génocide à travers le monde et en particulier dans les, dans les uh, pays et les coins du monde où, uh, uh, où on a trouvé du conflit et, 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 et une guerre. Par exemple, le Canada n'est pas différent. Il faut qu'on uh, cherche vraiment les... Uh, 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 trouve qu'est-ce qui s'est passé avec, uh, uh, en termes de ce génocide, uh, où sont ses enfants. Uh, il faut pouvoir les identifier, il, va, il faut pouvoir les retourner ch chez eux, chez leur famille, chez leur nation, uh, et il faut agir aussitôt que possible. La découverte à Kamloops a réouvert uh, le trame de, de non seulement les survivants, mais leurs enfants, le, le, le petits enfants des nations entières. Uh, C'est particulièrement, particulièrement fort au, au Manitoba où, où uh, uh, toutes les premières nations ont été uh, um, uh, abusées de cette façon. Les, les enfants ont été uh, uh, pris uh, uh, et, et, uh, uh, et on a vu uh, l'impact uh, 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 traumatique uh, de, 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 ces, uh, uh, de cette politique uh, du gouvernement fédéral. Il faut avoir, il faut trouver la vérité pour pouvoir uh, réaliser la réconciliation. Uh, 
Euh, il faut, euh, il faut euh, euh, être clair de ce qui s'est passé et c'est pour ça qu'on est ici pour demander de l'action. Je suis ici pour appuyer puis Mitchick McCree Nation à ce qu'ils euh, euh, reçoivent tout le support du gouvernement fédéral, l'aide le, le, des experts au niveau international et c'est ça que mérite chaque Première Nation, chaque famille, euh, chaque personne autochtone et c'est essentiel à la réconciliation mais aussi à la décolonisation qu'il faut euh, euh, qu'on euh, euh, poursuit à ce moment. Merci. Merci. Okay, thank you. Um, so the next question is from Christy Kirkup. I've just got been writing here. Um, so she wants to ask about the government's promise to move out $27 million this week to communities, um, money that was promised back in 2019. She asks, can you please respond to this and whether it is indeed enough money and why is an international investigation required? I can speak to that. No, it's not enough. Not enough money to uh, for over 600 nations to look in their backyards, to search underground searches and all the different uh, sites that these uh, people may be uh, our people may have been uh, buried. And it shouldn't take a, a tragedy like this to to move it forward. Like I stated before, the Truth and Reconciliation wanted this, this mandate to go ahead and do this. And you need, you need international or an unbiased body to oversee what's happening. When a person is murdered, you do not ask the murderer to do the investigation, do the funding. Because he's going to take you somewhere else. He's not going to tell the truth. Because he wants to save himself the embarrassment or to remain free. It's a similar concept, like I stated before. It's, it's hard on us. Our people need to understand also that we must call on the national, international body is to provide that oversight and then a genocide across the world, Canada, United States, British, Russia, or whatever. They actually get involved in those areas to make sure that there's real truth uncovered. You must find the truth. We have to search for it in a meaningful way. When we pat that yo, I get to find out that 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 they come out with that say that that do that. We saw that get asked me. We will not ask the person who did the assault or do the person who did the injustice what to do, how to do it, and how to finance us, because that's what you're doing. We have to do it ourselves. The people have to do it. We ask, we have to ask for an unbiased body to provide oversight to ensure that Canada does the right thing. So that's, that's my answer, thank you. Thank you, Chief. So the next question will be uh, Dylan Robertson. Dylan, you got one question, one follow-up. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, hi there, thanks for taking our questions today. Um, I know both the Cross Lake schools have been run by the Catholic Church, and we know that there's been an issue with documents from the Catholic Church in some provinces, but not all of them. So I was wondering from the chief and maybe um, from, from Nikki as well, you know, is that an issue when it comes to the two Cross Lake uh, schools in terms of getting the records from the church? It is Canada who sanctioned these residential schools. 
and they were working with the Catholic Church to try and eradicate the Indian from the child, as they say. This is the words from the first Prime Minister of Canada. And they tried to they tried to teach us something different. So the Catholics are, and the other religious organizations are as much to blame as Canada. I had a chance to visit the Pope in the past. I spoke to him. I asked for an apology when, when Prime Minister Harper did this apology. We wanted the, the Pope to apologize as well. I went with the, the Crown Chief David Harper at that time. We wanted an apology as well from him. Guess what he did? First Pope in 600 years to step down. You know, it's hard to live with the truth when it's brought to your face. I'm not saying that we are the reason for him stepping down, but I'm sure that it has played some significance in his conscience about what happened. So they have a role as well. They make a lot of money of our people, of a lot of people. They're one of the richest people. They should be financing this as well. Dylan, do you have a follow-up question? Dinky, uh, didn't, did you have a, something to say on the record side for the church? Sorry, I, I had a follow-up. Sure. I wanted to check with that. Yeah, I I, uh, I support uh, exactly as Chief Monias has has expressed that the church is uh, uh, has a critical uh, or must be held accountable, uh, must be held responsible, uh, and uh, and Canada has uh, the power uh, to uh, uh, to help do that. Uh, they were state-sanctioned schools run by the church. Uh, uh, Canada uh, 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 gives all sorts of favorable treatment to the Catholic Church and other churches in our country. Uh, but uh, there's no turning back from the news coming out of Kamloops. Uh, the wounds have been uh, 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 ripped open again. Uh, the, uh, the facade that is reconciliation has been uh, uh, uncovered. Uh, there has to be truth for there to be reconciliation reconciliation and that means getting access to the records that also means uh, a, a criminal investigations that would also involve uh, clergy and uh, 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 officials with the churches uh, and frankly reparations uh, this uh, Canada cannot go back after the uh, uh, the uh, uh, news out of out of Kamloops this past week this is only the beginning Thank you. And uh, my follow up, I'm sorry to double barrel it, but I will double barrel it. Uh, so for Nikki, I was wondering if it's optimal to get the UN to step in here, or if this is more of a backstop, that if Ottawa had set up a process that sets the standards with First Nations and they consent to it, if that's optimal or if or the UN is the preferred choice for you. And also um, for Chief Monius, um, I just wanted to touch on the day school fire uh, I know you spoke about it before, but we were just wondering if there is a suspected motive related to the legacy of the spot and also if it was being used for anything um, recently, like activities or just preserving it as a historical site. Okay, I can answer with respect to the fire. We did have a fire at the IRS building. It's, it's called an IRS building, Indian Residential School building because it was part of the residential school. It was a day school that uh, our people um, went to school there, including myself in some of the, those schools. A uh, couple of mornings ago, I was, a, I, I was I got a call, I see yes, yesterday, eh? yes, yesterday, sorry. It was yesterday, I got a call at 5.30 in the morning and there's a fire. I immediately got out, got dressed, I threw out to the fire. And I was told that the fire was at the resident, at the resident, the old residential school called IRS building. 
and it was uh, it was a total burnout. It's suspicious. It's being investigated by the police, RCMP, and also by the fire commission. That uh, it's suspected that it may be arson. So they're investigating, and the building was used. Uh, it was used uh, for holding an office there for day school claims and residential school claims. It was used in the past as a Northern Flood Agreement office to make claims against Hydro. It was also used as a resource center for the STAR program, for the maternal health program, um, to look after children, babies, and so forth. And there's a lot of uh, historical documents in there as well for Northern Flood Agreement, but also for uh, these school planes and so forth that's there. It's a building to us and it's a resource to us because we don't have many buildings in the community that we can use because it's hard to generate income, enough funds because of, of the policies that the government creates that we can't build our own. We can't, it's hard to do our economic job now. and it, you can't leverage capital dollars or buildings on reserve, so the bank won't finance them because he can, because it's on reserve. And so, of course, we use the building. We use every every single piece of building we have to use for programming to help our people. But for some people, and for masses, for many people, it's a constant reminder of what happened in the past. It's a constant reminder of the deaths that occurred, of the sexual abuse that occurred, of the assaults that occurred, and also the, the, the separations of, fam of children from their families. Many children in the residential school, even though that the residential schools were in our community, they were not allowed to interact with their family members. Once in a while, they would see them maybe in uh, Christmas time or something like that, but many times they weren't. They weren't even allowed to celebrate any uh, defense special occasions. I remember one of our elders or one of our councils stating he snuck out from his room and he looked out the window. Across the river, you could see lights flickering from his grandmother's place. And he says, so close and yet so far. And he felt lonely, even though that they were just, you know, about a kilometer away that where you could actually see the house. But that's how segregated they were from the rest of the community. So that place was a constant reminder for many people of the atrocities that occurred. When I was standing there, one of the people was actually working right, right, the, right by the water plant. And he says, it's good to see that building go. I had so many bad memories for me, he says. And me and RCMP just looked at him because he works nearby and he just came to work and he just noticed that there's a fire. So he came to talk. But for him, it was a sense of relief that he won't get to see that building again. You know, but somebody, somebody may they have acted on it. I can't say for 100% sure, but it's suspected. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Dylan, to your first question, I um, I did want to clarify the International Commission on Missing Persons is not a UN body, uh, but it is, uh, um, uh, so it's independent, uh, uh, but it has uh, uh, worked in, in, in many war zones and conflict zones uh, um, where obviously uh, the UN has been uh, uh, directly involved and uh, they are the foremost experts worldwide on this work. Uh, they, um, uh, in fact, uh, just so some background, uh, uh, they had uh, played a part in investigating uh, uh, the uh, um, impacts of the Lac Megantique disaster. Um, but obviously here, the, the, uh, uh, the level of um, 
that we're talking about is is very different. Um, and uh, we did have the opportunity to meet with them a few days ago. And as, as you heard from Chief Monias, they will be pursuing these discussions bilaterally. Uh, but what is clear is that uh, uh, there is, there's been no intent from the government to bring in any sort of international body or international experts. That is not acceptable. What we are talking about here is genocide. We need top experts at the world, at the international level to come in and work with First Nations uh, to, uh, to bring their children home. Thank you, Dylan. So the next question is from Mark uh, Neufeld. Um, Mark, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mark Neufeld, City News. Can you check, check, can, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. I, I did step away, so I apologize if I'm, I'm asking repeat here, but just given what you're saying there about the International Commission of Missing Persons and the background they have in, in what they do, are you expecting criminal charges to be laid in this? And if they aren't, uh, what would you think? Well, for me, there should be criminal charges. There should be a criminal investigation. Anytime you find a crave set, unmarked, unidentified, and not knowing how they died, you want to do a criminal investigation on any unnatural death, is what they would call it by the medical examiner's office. When that happens, there has to be an investigation. There has to be forensics done. There has to, the police has to be involved. And somebody has to be held accountable for the deaths if it's un, unjustified. And in this case, it is. So yes. I'm not sure if um, Ms. Ashton wants to speak to that at all, but does not need to. Just offering an opportunity. Uh, sure, I, I want to echo the chief's calls. Uh, absolutely, these should be treated as crime scenes. Uh, um, I, um, uh, uh, Mary uh, Ellen Tupelafond has indicated this clearly. Uh, we've uh, um, we've heard from the TRC commissioners as well uh, that uh, um, that uh, these invest the, we're, we refer to them as searches, but but really. It, it, the the attention that goes into this must be at the level of an investigation. We are talking about uh, a, a criminal uh, a criminal investigation, uh, and uh, um, you know we we are talking about genocide. What what's happened here fits the UN uh, definition of genocide, uh, and uh, uh, and this is the kind of work that the ICMP does. Is uh, they they do these investigations uh, at at that level uh, that. Um, uh, you know that, that recognizes the potential of criminality, uh, the possibility of criminality, and uh, and that's exactly the level of of, uh, of attention uh, and uh, um, uh, investigation that uh, that we need to see here in uh, in Canada. Thank you. Do you have a follow up, Mark? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, um, just sort of. Also, I know you had had listed the specific residential schools that you do want to look at and Josh had spoken about some other sites here in Winnipeg I know there's one even between Wellington and Academy do you think that all sites need to be re-looked at even ones that maybe were searched in the past do you think we need to bring a refreshed lens to all these sites well I think every every area that uh, has grave sites and mark they should be investigated. Don't you want to know what's happened to those people? Don't you want to know why they died? Why they are there? I mean, it's it's part of the truth and reconciliation. We have a lot of missing and murdered women. We have a lot of missing and murdered men. We have a lot of murdered missing children who have, we just found mass grave on. We have to have answers. We have to have the truth uncovered. So yes, we should be looking at those things as well. Thank, thank you, Mark. Oh, Nikki, did you want to add something? I, I was going to say, I, I agree. Uh, these uh, sites, including sites that may have been looked into the past, uh, we, uh, we know that um, 
uh, there is a uh, very advanced technology at this time to do this work. ICMP uh, does this kind of work. Uh, there, there must be thorough investigations uh, where uh, mass graves, unburied uh, Indigenous uh, children, people are, are suspected to be. Uh, this is criminal activity. Uh, this is the beginning of seeking truth, but also pursuing justice. Thank you, Mark. So we have time for one last question. Um, if anyone else would like to ask a question, could you please use the raise hand function or send me a message privately in the chat? Okay, I'm not seeing any more raised hands. So I think I will just pass the mic on to Nikki for some closing remarks before we end today's press conference. Well, I'd like to first turn it to Chief Monias and uh, Councillor Robinson, uh, if uh, if you have any closing remarks. Yeah, I just want to say that um, this is very, um, this is something that um, should have been done a long time ago. This is something that, that the Can Canada should have acted on uh, according to the TRC report. There's 94 recommendations there, and I, I haven't seen much of them fulfilled. And then learning of what happened, it's like something that was never there. And um, it's very important for Canada to take a stand in ensuring that where, where there was a residential school across this nation of ours, they should be looking into each one. We want the truth. We want the truth into every institution. We want the name of every child from each institution that was unaccounted for or is missing. We want everything to be done according to the way us indigenous people want it done. I don't want to be given direction anymore. We want to be the ones to be heard how we want this done. And as we state, there must be truth for there to be reconciliation. There must be. And this is what we're standing up for. Thank you. Well, so uh, I want to thank everybody that's uh, all the reporters. Thank you for sending out the message, giving us a voice to the government because we don't, we don't, really, most times we don't have a voice. And you guys become our voice. And I thank you for that. I also want to tell Premier Brian Pallister, you know, to not be like Jason. Uh, what's her? What's his name? There, uh, uh, Kenny, the Premier from Alberta. You know, work with us as well. Do not come. To, do not help hide the truth. Help us uncover the truth, because many of these grave sites are off reserve as well. And we also asked the mayors of the towns of the cities to help us out as well. Premier Ballester, do not contribute to the destruction of our, our people. You must come to us in a relationship that's truth, based on truth and a good relationship as well. 
So help us out here as well. Because you're living in our territories and our lands. You also have a responsibility to this as well. And thank you, everybody, for listening to us. Can I ask you to name it? And do I have? I give this case. It is not an act. It is not just that it is just a person. It is not just that it is one thought. It is not just the point. It is about the game. It is 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 the game. I want to say thank you, Chief Monias. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. My final message is, is to unequivocally support the call of Pemichicamac Cree Nation on the federal government to pull out all the store stops to support the search of the residential grounds that was brutally imposed on them for decades, to support the identification and the, the forensic identification and the repatriation of children that they are certain will be found there. It is time to bring their children home. I fully and unequivocally also support their call to bring in experts at the international level, uh, in, especially the International Commission on Missing Persons. This is genocide. These are mass graves we are talking about. We need international expertise that can work with First Nations like Pimichikamak and others to ensure that the remains are treated with the utmost respect, that this is treated as the criminal investigation uh, that uh, it, is, it, it is likely to be uh, and uh, most certain to be in, in uh, many known instances. Uh, and, uh, and we need to ensure that, uh, uh, that all of the care is being taken in this work. The current gov federal government's response is not good enough. It's not acceptable. This cannot be ad hoc. This cannot be uh, another link that you click on. Uh, this cannot be uh, capped uh, and, and done on a community by community basis. There needs to be uh, independent oversight. There needs to be uh, international involvement here. This is the beginning of a, a, a journey for our country. First Nations are telling us what needs to be done for there to be truth, for there to be justice, for there to be reconciliation. My message to the Prime Minister today is this is genocide. And if you are not part of the solution, you are part of the problem. Thank you to Pimichikamak Cree Nation for standing up and to all First Nations who are standing up and showing us the way. It's time to bring their children home. Thank you. Ego se kinanaskumit now.